Hey everybody, if you are looking for a game call that is elk, turkey, deer, predator calls, waterfowl calls, we highly recommend philpsgamecalls.com. Professional grade game calls made for every hunter. Welcome back to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Phelps Game Calls, with your hosts, David Crane and David Sandana. All right, man, we are here. Second year at the Pialp Sportsman Show, day three, I think. Yeah, it is. it's uh, day three, and um, yeah, so if you're hearing any background noise, there's actually people like everywhere walking walking through here so just bear with us um we are doing this live here at the show and man we're having a good time this has been fun and exciting we have some exciting news that we are not going to tell you guys about yet but yeah we're putting some things together um we got the display it's better our booth's better this year it's the same size as last year but yeah. we put a little more work into it um had some work done from a machinist friend of ours and and uh, we had some lights, but the batteries went out because the shows are long. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. I'll be taking those home tonight, charging them back up, and uh, kind of. And that's why I wanted corded ones, so we wouldn't have an issue. But it was just more it work. Was, yeah. Now we know. Yeah. Now we know. We can peel these suckers off. We'll get some different ones that we can actually plug in, and we don't have to worry about battery life at that point. So. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Live right. and you learn, right? Yeah. I'm trying so, to spice it up a notch for a year too. Yeah, year two. So this is our final week, uh, last couple days at the show. It's Friday night. We have a couple guests lined up. Yep, yep. Um, and we're going to have them on probably after this episode. we got one guy coming in. He's going to talk about what he does. And, and we had a t- conversation with him the day before yesterday. That was really good. All about food preparation. And if you want to sit down for 10 and 20 hours and talk about food, this is the guy you're going to talk to. Yeah, he knows he, his stuff. he's actually on the booth right next to us. Um, he does a lot of uh, sauces and jams. Mm-hmm. And we have to smell this all day long. He like, lit, this, he, is, this is not fair. Yeah. Um, all I want to do is eat. And... Uh, yeah, it's basically like his display stuff. So yeah, so <laughs> you can't just sit over there and start munching on all this stuff. And he literally has—he's literally cooking chicken in this sauce, and uh, he has a fan blowing, wafting it out to the crowd, so people smell it. And we're next to it, and every day at eight <laughs> o'clock we get fed. Yeah, after you see this, well, you'll probably see it in a YouTube short or something like that. I'll—I'll I'll go by the booth and show everybody like what's going on over here and why we uh why it's not fair for us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you had more i'd eat more you know but yeah 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 um, nice. but yeah he will be on the podcast um here probably at, right after this pretty yeah. much um talking about basically from from field to table yeah we'll cover a lot of field to table um talk about what he you know I was shocked by the chicken, just because all he puts is one in, I think he puts onions and something else in there, and it's one of his sauces, but that's it, and he just simmers it on low for a long period of time, and it's incredible. you got to bring the mic closer. I can barely hear you. I can hear really well. Now it's way better. Okay. There we go. Sorry, everybody, if it was kind of crappy in the beginning. No, it's all good. Yeah, we're, uh, who else are we bringing in? We got, we might have a, a comp- people from a, a binocular company we're going to step into. We're going to yep. start using their products. Yep, we um, are actually probably going over there before the show closes tonight. Uh, make purchase? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go budget and see what they got on, on the budget side because um, I'm, I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, we're both poor. We poor. We need we need we need sponsorship, binocular sponsorship. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna get on their lower end of things, and then Dave is um, thinking about also purchasing a pair of binoculars, I'm trying to up feet. his game. You're getting cold feet. <laughs> Messing up <on> my discount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the two for one deal. <laughs> you buy two, I get one free. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're gonna have uh, someone from a, um, a binocular or optics company mm-hmm. come by. They're gonna uh, do probably about 25 to 30 minute uh, podcast with us, and then we have a 
a, a duck guiding company. An outfit, yeah. Yeah, they, they're going to do a podcast with us. Um, try to get that lined up for tomorrow. Obviously, you guys are going to be seeing this in different segments. We're going to have uh, uh, segments. It's just going to be a sportsman's show. Yeah. Washington sportsman's show, like, one through however we, we, we end up pushing out. Yeah, then, then uh, we have a, a manufacturer, the guy, the company he has manufactures yak alpaca socks, like yak wool yes. socks. Yeah, so that's called, well, the, the product that it is, it's yak cashmere. Oh, yak cashmere, that's right. That's right. So it's like uh, yak fur, and it's also mixed with um, some, some other synthetic fabric, and it's actually better than merino wool. Yeah, it's like the so, highest antimicrobial. It feels super soft. Yeah. When you touch it, it's almost, well, it's cashmere. Yeah. So it's it's high end. Um, he says you really don't even need to wash them. You just yeah, gotta, so if just, you're out in the field, so he basically didn't really know, re- like, where he was going to fit in the hunting realm. And we basically broke down, like, dude, socks are super important. It's like socks and boots keep you in the hunt because once your feet get wet, or, or your feet start to hurt, you're you're dang near out of the dang hunt. Like, it, it's hard to keep pushing through the pain of every step. I mean, for me, I'd, I'd push through and just keep on hunting. But, you know, you really want to have a good boot. You really want to have a good sock. And we want to bring him on just to talk about his product because socks are a huge thing. If you only need to bring one pair of socks, I, I think that's, like, the best best bet. Yeah, and I've... I've become a little bit of a sock snob because I if I wear cotton socks like forget about it my feet go bad in well in, like the day-to-day living though not not just hunting like at home if I go and I put on a pair of Nikes I put some white cotton socks on I can't I can't do it, it I have to put like black socks on for some reason yeah uh, man I don't know what it is uh, my feet don't like cotton as well um, I've actually kind of gone away from cotton socks completely and I basically only have merino wool socks um i will throw on like a pair for the gym just because they're like the short ankle socks but i only have them on for a couple hours but when i take those things off across the way called these ducks and uh he called they called me in yesterday i went and i saw the i saw the the calls they had and the way they sound the guy's buddy makes them in arkansas and it's not i mean he's a he's obviously a call maker but He's not like a, a mass producer of calls. So the sound quality was so good. I purchased one for a friend of mine, gave it to him today, and it sounded incredible. And he was blown away. He's like, man, this thing feeds so good. And I don't even want to get started. I don't even want to get started with, uh, you know, making the sounds. But it, it was really incredible, those those calls. And every time they blow on them, I'm looking over. Well, we're kind of like getting fired up. So we'll, we'll tell you guys what's going on here in the next couple episodes. But... It's pretty exciting. We need to iron everything out, but yeah. yeah. In my, you know, duck season just ended for us, and this year was a, a tough year for for us down here. Uh, we 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 went out on a high note. The last two days, it was. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know. If you guys are not um, on our Instagram at all for the uh, Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, Dave actually put up some photos of some of the ducks that you know were taken. And man, they're slamming them, dude. It's it's one of my favorite hunts to do is a duck hunt, duck or goose. Um, it's just thrilling, you know the whole in, the whole atmosphere in the morning time, to set up, figuring out what the animals are thinking, how they're gonna move. Is your setup set up the right way? We're gonna cover all this stuff extensively in the next year, I'm sure. Oh yeah. But getting in, calling them, seeing how they react to the calls, and then it's it's equivalent over and over and over throughout the day of a mini elk hunt. There isn't a big bull at the end of each session, but coaxing the animals, having them come in, you know, it's it gets tense, dude. It's it's legit. And I've been telling you for a couple of years now, like, you got to go duck hunting. It's hunt been like go. seven years now. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's been, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. And, and for me, it's more or less like, the short notice it's yeah very short notice so dave will call me like either the the morning of or like the night and it's like 10 o'clock at night hey man can you go duck hunting in the morning like 
No, dude, I, it's like super short notice. I have to give my boss at least 24 hours and I'm before like, hey, I can man, take any listen, time. We're going to hunt from 7 a.m. till 9. Yeah, pretty much every time. Yes. Or, or like at the longest, 11.30. <laughs> that's stretching the day. You know, that's stretching the day. In the years past, we've been done hour and a half or two. You know, it's been pretty quick. There goes the game. Game and fish. Sniffing something out. He's got his bear dog with him. Doing the dang thing, man. Yeah, They're doing it. On patrol. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the duck hunting just ended. Um, we're getting excited for turkey season. You know, that's yeah, man, turkey is like right around the corner. That is like one of our major things that we love to do. We love to film it. It's um, it's becoming like one of the top like hunts that we look forward to every single year is turkey season. Turkey season is is a high priority every season, every yeah. year for me. And it started out. You know, we've talked about our first hunts. We both had them with Kirk. Uh, we both went to the same place. We still hunt around that same area. Yep. Uh, we've we've developed our uh, a little bit of a familiarness with uh, turkey hunting and calling. Last year we were able to get a whole hunt on film, and um, that was incredible. That was that's still a highlight, and it was a thunder gobbler, it meant just a yeah. just a big sucker. Uh, I think it was a nine and a three quarter inch beard. You know, it was which is which is awesome for a, a, a mountain turkey. This isn't you know some open field. Uh, turkey. These turkeys are um, running up and down like, I mean, the ridges. Like we hunt a ridge top, and we either go down one side or down another, and that's it. So we go up to the top, call up, try to find a tom, go after it. We booger it up or shoot it. Doesn't matter. We head right back up to the top again and start all over again. So it, it's it, it's a it's a workout. We make it a we make it a tough hunt, like, but it's fun. But it's a it's an extremely fun hunt. It's a necessary exercise. Going up and down the hill is necessary. Yep. And the birds call you to the locations. You know, you, you try to get the right setup and get the advantage of everything you need to have to, to bring the bird in. And you don't get to choose that that point in the mountains. Yep. Because it's it's either up or down. It's you know maybe you get lucky with a side hill bird. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but that usually is it's true. up or down, and yep. it's, it's tough because. A couple days of up and down, and you're going a thousand foot up, a thousand foot down, a thousand yeah. foot up, and you do that four times a day. So now you're sitting there going, okay, all this hiking, and I do think we're kind of overweighting it with our packs and stuff, the stuff we bring for these hunts. And I, so the other day I went and got a new turkey vest, and I was like, this is perfect. It has all the space I need. It's going to bring my meal. I can put the turkey in the back. I don't have to do the over the shoulder break your wrist action anymore. That's the part I'm really looking forward to is the backpack section. The big sack in the back. Oh, in the back where yeah. you just put it in there and put it, yeah, throw it in the back, and then you don't have to worry about it because uh, that, you know, them turkeys are, I don't know, 25 pounds probably, but you're carrying by a stick, you know, so there's a lot of leverage. yeah, they're little legs. They're legs, yeah, and so the leverage that it takes on your wrist and you know, on that little point in your shoulder, kind of strenuous, you know. Well, Kirk had this turkey sling thing so you'd put like one end around its neck and then the other end around its feet and it was basically just like a rifle sling but for a turkey and i and saw that cool. the first time i went with them and i was i was like that's badass yeah and then i wanted one and i can't find them anywhere so i thought oh, i'll make one so i actually made one out of a little rope and tried it out and i was like i, I don't know how to make the uh paracord thick wide you know that'd be oh. that'd be the way to do it well we can make some Karen's mom made my rifle slings. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll make them out of paracord then. Yeah, I have it all at my house. Awesome. Yeah, we'll make some. Yeah, then we can, Then it's easier because the little thin rope, it's it's like a, almost like a freaking, one of those things the mafia chokes people with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get it off me, get it off me. It's killing me. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to um, go through a design and see if we can make our own. Yeah, we'll have to test difficult. it out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's take a break, get some people lined up here, and we'll get somebody on the show. Yeah, definitely. All right, everybody. See you soon. See you.